Hey guys, welcome back. Why am I smiling? Mm, I got a new toy. I got a new toy. Okay, so now that we know I have a new toy, we don't know what it is yet. Another thing is you guys might be asking, what the hell is this on your table? You got a cleaning rod, you've got a knife, you've got calipers, you've got a tape measure, and I'm gonna have some other things up here too. So what is all this? I'm going to start this review video off of this particular gun during the unboxing and I'm going to try to answer a few basic questions that you're going to have. You know, typical questions, what's the rifling, what's the twist rate? I'm going to answer that for you and I'm going to show you how I do it. What length is a barrel? What's the diameter of the barrel? You know, I'm going to answer these things. So let's get started. Stop talking. Let's take a look at what I got. Bam! Another big board, guys the Epoch Badger 40 cal. That's right, another big board, the new Epoch. Let's go ahead and unbox it. This box just came to me probably 30 minutes ago. Enough time for me to set up the cameras and start filming. I haven't had this long. I haven't even opened the box. So you guys are going to open this box with me as we go along here. So let's get started. Here we go. Alright, let's go here. Here. Let's get down here. One thing I like to do for all you newbies when you get an air gun, open it from one end only, slide the original contents out. That way you always have this box in great shape. So if you have to return it, it's not all cut up and you're pulling it, trying to break the tape like you do Christmas presents. Open it from one end, slide everything out, and you preserve the box. The guys that have been doing this a long time know exactly what I'm talking about. We keep everything for the, at least the first month or two, just in case we have to return things. Okay. There's not a box in this box, so that's a little, a little weird. Okay, so the gun is just wrapped up in the box in bubble wrap. As you can see here, there's the muzzle. This is how it came. This is not used, this is brand new. All right. Throw that away, save that for my son. Check the box here. Packing slip here from Airgun Depot. Thanks, guys. And yeah, let's move on with it. The Badger. There we go. Instruction manual. All right. If you guys watched my first review video of the Hot Sun uh, Carnivore instruction manual, so we will read this later. But at least they give us something. It says this air rifle is pre-charged with over a thousand psi. It talks about gun safety, air gun safety, charging the rifle, filling procedure. Do not cock and dry fire the air rifle when the air reservoir is completely empty. This can potentially damage the, the uh, air rifle, meaning it could damage the valve. So do not dry fire the Badger as per the manufacturer's instructions. We read the instruction manual. I can already tell you guys it's not, uh, that does not feel very long to me and it's not heavy, that's for sure. Um, all right, well, typical QB stock here. It's definitely light. I will let you guys know how much this thing weighs in a minute here. Man, this can't be about seven pounds. I mean, 
I'm guessing about seven pounds. As you can see, I'm trying to balance it here to see where it's balancing. I mean, right at the, I guess the hold down bolt in the stock there, you put your palm just in front of it and the gun balances like right there. All right, man, this looks nice actually. I can already tell, I saw the first version. Uh, thing to note here is it's a two piece uh, weaver rail. I wish they would have at least made this rear piece longer. I have a machinist buddy that can make me one. So I'm going to take, take this off and I'm going to make one piece that's actually long. I'm going to redo these two. I don't like this method. Even though it'll still be two pieces, it'll be at least a longer, longer base back here. I don't like these small uh, weaver bases. They're only like one inch by one inch. But okay, All right, guys. Let's, start. let's start with the basics. Here's the barrel. The barrel comes all the way back to where the face of the bolt pro meets the face of the breech, where the barrel comes all the way to the face of the breech. So by me telling you that, that means we can measure like this. From here, 28 inches on the money. So the barrel is 28 inches long. Let's take a look at the diameter of the air tube. Get my calibers. Don't want to scratch it. Squared up there. Okay, I'm getting basically 1.05 inches, or let's just say one inch. It's a one inch diameter, not a seven eighths like the Corsair. It's a one eighth outside. So it's probably seven eighths inside, I would assume. Don't quote me on that, but it's a one inch outside diameter air tube. Okay, right here you got the basic uh, eighth inch fill nipple, which doesn't have any kind of cover on it. You can easily buy probably a Ninja Paintball. Huh, I have one of those. The magnetic type, or you can have one custom made or whatever, but it does not come with the dust cover. Okay, you got a barrel band that attaches just in front of the air tube there, between the fill nipple and the air tube. Definitely looks pretty solid, that's for sure. Cerakote is really nice. I know this is Cerakote. <clears throat> On this side here, I'm not going to do a camera and camera, just take my word for it. They uh, engraved in here Badger .40, Badger 40. Got the basic QB stock here. This is your typical QB stock. Looks a little more modernized. I mean, there's a little swell right here. Whereas I think my other QBs are straight. As soon as you go from right here, it goes straight back. This has like a, a type of swell. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can... Uh, see it right there but it looks a little bit better than the QB and it, they only did it on one side so obviously these are a little bit updated stocks it's got a typical QB safety here it's on safe slide it forward it's on fire this is also the QB 78 trigger assembly this is just one assembly that goes all the way in if you guys are pretty familiar with the Chinese QB Go ahead and cock it and see how this thing cocks. So we know it has at least a thousand PSI air, so we will not be firing. It's a lot of take up, but if I would have to guess, that's probably a two and a half, three pound trigger. We'll take a look at that. But it feels good. I mean, it feels better than the QB, so I don't think I'm gonna take have that much work. I'm just gonna make some adjustments and make it to where it releases a little earlier. Um, Basically, the gun is, I can tell you guys now, this is a no-frills design. It's not like the, uh, take for example, the hot sun that I uh, reviewed. doesn't have a lot of features. It's not going to have adjustable combs and adjustable stocks and, you know, fully adjustable triggers. This trigger can be modified, you know, if you modify, like I do, your own guns. It can be modified. It's not, it doesn't feel bad. It just has a lot of take up. As soon as you touch it, you feel the spring and it's under load and you're steady coming back and you get way back here to what would be the second stage and then it finally breaks. The air tube is 24 and a half inches in length. Um, what else? You got the weaver bases. You have a pretty nice bolt right here, bolt and bolt probe. It's a probe type. It's not the flow through, um, which is a good thing. You don't want the flow through in a big bore. Uh, it, this is actual bolt pro, but it's it's solid. It looks a better better built than what was on the Corsair. <clears throat> so I'm really digging that. I mean, that's pretty much it.
All right, guys, we're going to try to figure out the twist weight of the barrel. Without removing or trying to disassemble this whole entire gun, we're going to figure out the twist rate of the barrel. And this is another, the method I'm going to show you guys is another method that I use to clean the barrel on my Corsair because these guns are basically based, they're the same type of gun. So what I normally do is get a big zip tie, take it around the trigger, pull the gun, pull this back and cock it. And you can lock it behind the scope rail right here. So your zip tie will come up, it'll come over, and it'll lock down, and you leave it cocked. If the gun happens to fire, it's not going to overpower the zip lock. It will not overpower the zip lock. So it's for me, as well as putting the gun on uh, safety, put the gun on safety. Stick a zip tie through it, tighten it around the weaver base right here, tighten it pretty good, and then leave it like that. You don't have to worry about while the cleaning rod's in here, you don't have to worry about the gun trying to fire. All right, guys, so one of the first things I'll do is I'll take my cleaning rod here with the wire brush with a couple of, uh, I don't know, those are probably three inch squares or one square around it. To make it tight when it goes through the bore so as it's as I'm pushing it forward it's spinning with the rifling and staying true so the one thing I want to do is go up the cleaning rod it doesn't matter but go up lower than the barrel so I'm gonna go way up here to the handle like this and I'm gonna take a piece of tape and basically stick it around the cleaning rod like this you can do it you can do it a whole bunch of different ways you can do it like this and then you can put a, a mark on it or something, but I'm gonna use this as my indicator of one complete revolution. All right, you guys will see what I'm talking about in a second. So now let's go ahead and grab a patch or two. I'm gonna get, yeah, let's try two. I'm gonna use two three inch patches. I'm not soaking them. I'm not trying to clean the barrel, not yet, that's later. I just wanna stick them on here like this. And we're gonna start this in the barrel at the very tip. Now the one thing you're going to want to do, let me, let me check, you want to check if you have enough cotton patches. So what I'm going to do is push and that's, that's pretty firm. So I do have enough patches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the tape straight up and down. As I push the rod in, the tape is going to rotate like this. As it rotates, one full turn comes back to the 12 o'clock position. This is going to be inside the barrel, let's say right here. So that's one complete revolution from there to where my finger is. And all you do is measure from the end to where your finger, and if it's 20 inches, your barrel is 1 in 20. If it's 18 inches, it's 1 in 18. If it's 10 inches, it's 1 in 10. If it's 48 inches, it's 1 in 48 inches. So I'm guessing this is a 1 in 20 twist, 401 caliber barrel. Let's find out. Let's go here. Get this in. I'm going to start where the cleaning rod meets the, the tip of the uh, cleaning rod actually meets the jag or the brush. Just straight up and down. There we go. One in 22. So we got a one in 22 twist. Verify it one more time. One in 22. There it is. One in 22 twist. All right. So there's my method for checking the rifling twist rate of a barrel. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up the unboxing here. 
What you just saw was an overview of the uh, entire rifle coming out of the box, how they package it, what the gun looks like out of the box. Everything is flawless. I mean, no imperfections. Um, we went over finding the rifle twist rate, which was 1 in 22. It's 401 diameter bore. Um, the features. One thing I did want to go over before we close this out is a few things from the instructions. You guys that don't have the gun, um, it does come shipped with 1,000 PSI. Um, the Badger can be charged with compressed air, nitrogen, or helium. That's right. We got a gun that works on helium, made right here in the USA, another one. This gun is assembled with not only quality chrome molly steel parts, including the barrel and the air tube, but it also has high grade bolts, grade fives and I think grade eights um, is what it says on here. Um, one of the other things that it mentions is round balls of 395 diameter are best used. Um, Hornady Spear make them. Um, bullets of 401 diameter should be used. It'll shoot conicals, wag cutters, hollow points, flat nose, flat nose conicals. Weights from 92 grain round balls up to 250 grain bullets are optimum in this gun. So you can shoot anywhere from a 92 grain round ball, 92, 95 grain round balls, all the way up to 250 grain 401 diameter conicals or bullets or slugs, whatever you prefer to call them. Max fill pressure was another uh, issue, another question I wanted to cover. 300 bar or 4320 PSI, maximum. So it's just not, they do not recommend 4500, they recommend 4320 or 300 bar. The trigger is single stage as I mentioned. It weighs eight pounds. It has two number 18 Weaver mounts. The length is approximately 48 inches or four feet. And that's pretty much it.